Hello and welcome back everyone, Joe here, and I'm so excited to show you the sewing process for this cosplay I've been working on for about a month and a half, and it's a childhood favorite, it's a Sakura Kinomoto cosplay from Sakura the Card Captor, and I'm beyond excited to show you guys the entire process, so without further ado, let's jump straight in. To get started, I went ahead and draped the center front and the center back of the white dress that she wears under. And I made it two separate dresses just because I wanted two like things I could keep trying on on my dolls and wear interchangeably with other items I've made. And I also wanted it as a really good stain prevention like layer. So I wanted like an all white dress just to fully protect her from any of the pink fabric even though I did test it and it did not stain at all. But it can never be too sure or too safe with like staining in your dolls. It's way better to be safe. So I went ahead and did that. Once they were all done, I decided to make some patterns and I thought of just adding the shoulder seams together and just making it one whole pattern, making my life a little easier. I also decided to add the fold indicator on both ends of the pattern, the center front and the center back, um, since it could be used either way really. And I just fold it out of the way when I'm not using it and it works perfectly fine. After finishing the main bodice piece, it's time for the sleeve and all I did was measure the armhole and kind of take that measurement, make draft a regular sleeve and then I just added like an inch in the center evenly both down the middle just to add that little extra fullness we need to puff up the sleeves and this is a little example on screen right now showing you how it's going to look and I jumped straight to attaching them and they're already sewn on. At this point, I'm just clipping the collar just to make sure I'm able to stretch it out in like a straight line to get a perfect measurement to be able to draft the collar, which is what I'm doing now on screen. It's just a simple little rectangular pattern piece and I kind of sandwiched in some lace in the middle to kind of give it that little scalloped look that Sakura normally has in her cosplay. And I'm super happy with how it turned out and it looks so good. After making sure the measurements match up and everything's all good, I cut out the fabric and I went ahead and sandwiched the lace in between. So the lace sticking out is what's going to be sandwiched in the collar, but I do end up trimming it. So the, tra the lace that's currently inside is on the right side of the piece. And once I stitch all around, I turn it inside out and it reveals a little row, a little cute little scallops that we've been hoping for. So there it is and all I do is just put it on, stitch it on and it's all set to go. Super simple super cute and it looks amazing so after stitching it this is how it looks and i throw it on the dress form just to see how it fits well to double check and make sure it fits because if it doesn't that's everything goes wrong but luckily everything worked out the sleeves look cute it fits amazing and it's time for the skirt the skirt is just a whole bunch of little rectangle pieces that i cut from scrap fabric of the same type of material and i just stitched them wherever i needed to so to get the fullness and the full measurement of the skirt, all I did was measure the hem of the bodice and kind of multiplied it times three around there. I recommend a little tiny less because then it does strain your machine, but besides that, it gives a great fullness and it looks amazing. So once I attached the skirt, I tried it on the dress form really quick just to double check and make sure everything is fine. And then it's time for the bloomers. Now you have seen me make these bloomers before in my Elf on the Shelf series. I will tag above so you guys could go ahead and watch if you haven't yet. The thing about these bloomers is that I wanted to make them a little differently and have them look as if they have more texture and more interesting than just plain bloomers. So what I did was sew the shorts normally as I would the crotch seams and then the underseam that goes under the legs. And then for the casings, I went ahead and stitched lace all around the bottom short opening and the waist short opening and after doing so i went ahead and threaded elastic through it and they were all set so for those of you who want to know how exactly i attached the lace all i did was flip the pants or well, the shorts wrong side out i sewed on the lace all around flipped their back inside out with the right side showing out then i folded over that seam the lace over the seam and then just top stitched all around leaving an opening wherever you'd like the gathers kind of hide the opening so you're pretty good on that and you don't have to top stitch it again and risk stitching your elastic so on that end you're good and that once you do that you're all set you just have to do it to the short openings the leg openings at the bottom and yeah that's it
So once we add the elastic, this is how they look. And I think they look amazing. I really like how the lace looks. And I ended up leaving some fringe at the hem of the short openings just to add some extra little depth. <laughs> And after that, all I did was add some lace to the back of the opening of the dress just to kind of hide the serged ends. Since I didn't want to interface it, I didn't want to do anything crazy, I just added the lace just to kind of mask the serging and kind of give it like a clean finish. So for the closure, I went ahead and marked three dots, but I ended up not doing the third one and adding some snaps to the top and the marking at the waistline. So the reason why I didn't add the middle snap was because I wanted to give some ease for any other bust sizes that I may want to try this with and for movement as well. So if the doll wants to bend over or like be sitting down or something like that, it won't kind of restrict her. So now that the white dress is all done, we're going to move on to the pink dress and that final dress that we're going to be working on. And for patterns, I will be reusing the same ones I used for a Menju Kim inspired video. I will tag the video up above so you guys can check it out if you haven't yet. This time around, the only thing I'm changing is just using one tier of skirts instead of making three, which is what I did for the Menju Kim inspired dress. And after sewing all the bodice pieces together, I went ahead and sewed the facing on. And I will be doing the same strap method again to join straps. So all you do is sew along the neck hole and the armholes of the straps. So for this to work, you really need to leave the openings alone. Don't stitch over them, just leave them as is. Just stitch the armholes and the neckline. So once you stitch the armholes and the center front neckline, all you need to do is turn the center two middle straps right sides out. So once the center ones are right sides out, you take one of the ones that are right sides out and thread it into the its corresponding strap with the materials matching each side. So with the white side facing the white side and the pink facing the pink material. So once you thread it through, you just gotta make sure it's even, there's no twists, and you just stitch it together. And the big reveal, here it is, you just pull it through and bam, a perfect little strap and it looks amazing. And now it's time for the other side and I'll let you guys just watch that without my commentary. <laughs> So now that we've finished the bodice, it's time to move on to the skirt. Sadly, I, for some reason, I thought half of the skirt would totally make up the entire fullness I needed for this cosplay, and I was so wrong. It was so flat. So I ended up not liking how it looked, so I took it off and went back and cut out about... No, I ended up cutting two more, I believe. After doing that, I put together all the separate parts, and then I gathered them together and prepared them to attach to the bodice. After attaching the skirt, I kind of experimented with different methods of attaching the ribbon on. I glued some, I glued about two different types to see how they would react and how they would look. And I also stitched one of them onto a piece to see how it would look. I didn't like how the needle and the stitches split the silk ribbon. So I ended up just gluing it on and marking like about half an inch off of the hem of the entire circle skirt and then slowly but surely gluing the ribbon on.
Alrighty, so now that the bigger stuff is out of the way, it's time for the smaller details, and it is the bows. Let me tell you, I have a love and hate relationship with them because I kind of love how they look, but it is, I dread making them, honestly. I did end up doing this little thing with magnets, which is a little freeze frame right here, so you guys can see the type of magnet I'm using, where I glued some magnets onto there just so that the bows can be removable and can shift around the clothing for pictures and stuff like that. And I don't know, I just really like that idea of removable bows or being able to move them around. And this is me attaching them to the sleeve. All you do is run one of the magnets under the sleeve and then just simply move the other bow which has its own magnet glued on over it and it'll just stick and hold its place. It's amazing and I don't know why I haven't done it before. I will say that I won't go too in depth into bow making since there's so many tutorials and DIYs out there and it's, I honestly just made a bunch of like little random rectangles and just hoped for the best and kind of winged it on my first try but besides that all i did was just add a little dab of glue put the magnets on two sets of magnets just matching ones already stuck together and just put them on made sure that the glue didn't get in between the magnets so they don't stick and that's it and i let it rest for about 24 hours without before really doing anything with them so now that we finished the bows it's time for the hat and all i really did was a big circle skirt i folded it over sewed and made a little casing for elastic However, my first prototype was a little too small and it would just fly off the head so I ended up making it a little bigger and ended up fitting perfect. I did at attach one of the bows just like she wears it in the cosplay picture and I think it looks really good. And a newer thing that I am trying out is eye making for my dolls which is very new to me and it did seem a lot more complicated but I do have another video that goes fully in depth and explains a few methods to create these glass eyes that have always really fascinated me and have I've always wondered how people make them but I haven't really been a fan of the resin ones like all resin ones I really like them to have like glass and I really like how it really warps the look of it and the follow me aspect so for those of you who are interested in knowing more about this process I will tag it up above and link it below in the bio for you guys so like a big thing I really want for this project is cohesion and staying true to the character which is why I really kind of wanted to replicate Sakura's eyes in the show and how cute they really look. I also went ahead and made a wig which is what we're going to look into next. I did everything from scratch which was the wig cap. I made some webs even, that's why they look a little wonky but trust me they look great once they're hidden. And I even styled a wig and trimmed it myself like a cute little bob that fades that kind of like extends down which, which is basically Sakura's hair and it's so new to me it was my first attempt and I'm also I just also got this iron with that's on cam so I was very excited to use it and I was honestly really happy with the end result I will also release another video that goes fully in depth on her wig and I also show a new method of making wefts so I really hope you guys also look forward to that and it will be out very soon so after having a blast <laughs> styling her hair I really took my time with it because I love this process this part of the process it's so fun to me um i just really want to try on the hat and see how it's gonna look and i love it it's so cute and i'm excited to see everything else on her so let's jump straight in and get her dressed And just like that, she's ready to go and find the rest of her cloak cards and complete the set. And I really hope Tomoyo is proud of me. <laughs> um, no, in all seriousness, I'm so happy with the outcome and I really hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Please do not forget to leave a like, subscribe if you have not yet, and if you're new. Thank you so much and I welcome you to the channel. My name's Joe. We do a lot of sewing for dolls and sewing in general. A lot of anime stuff. So please stick around and I hope to see you guys next time. Take care.